Hi, and welcome to my molecular biology playlist. In this video, we'll talk about histone modifications, which is the basis of epigenetic changes. Now, we know that our chromosome is made up of nucleosomes. It's like a bidon string structure. And the nucleosome has two components. One is a histone core, and the second is DNA. DNA is wrapped around the histone core, making this beads on string like appearance. Now inside the histone core, there are several kinds of histones like H3, H4, H2A, 2B, and a linker histone H1. And around this histone octamer, the DNA is wrapped around, right? If we look at the structure of the histones, we found something in common, which is a histone fold. All are uh, alpha helical structure which is common in all the histone types and the second structure is the n-terminal tail the length of the n-terminal tail is variable between the histone types however the n-terminal tail and the residues present in the n-terminal tail are enriched site for several modifications and there are different type of modifications which can take place in these n-terminal tail and in this video we would learn about those modifications so we should first ask two questions that how these modifications takes place what is the context behind that and what is the consequence of these modifications coming into the first question that how does these mo modifications takes place but before that we should understand what are the type of modifications that is possible on a histone tail and here I'll be only talking about few of these modifications which are frequently occurring. Um, among these, the most frequent is the acetylation. Acetylation simply means addition of an acetyl group onto the lysine or arginine residues on the N-terminal tail. Methylation means addition of methyl group onto the lysine or arginine residues. Phosphorylation is another common type of modifications takes place in the histones histones in terminal tail and it mostly occurs in the serine or threonine residues other type of uh, modifications includes includes ubiquitinylation where ubiquitin group is added to a lysine group or adp ribosylation where adp ribosyl group is added to the histone tail now first kind of modification that we should learn about is acetylation addition of an acetyl group to lysine or arginine doesn't take place spontaneously. It, the acetylation on li, uh, lysine group which would form the acetyl lysine or acetylation of arginine which would form acetyl arginine takes place with the help of an enzyme known as histone acetyl transferase. This enzyme is very important in context of chromatin uh, conformation and in a second we would look at that. But the reverse reaction or these modifications are very uh, flexible and reversible. So the reverse reaction is triggered by another enzyme known as histone deacetylase or HDAX. So HATS and HDAX kind of work in an opposite fashion to regulate the gene expression profile in a context and a time dependent manner. Now it has been seen that Acetyl group or acetylated histones are associated with euchromatin, whereas deacetylated histones are generally associated with heterochromatin state. That means acetylation somehow loosens up the chromosomal conformation and make it more accessible to several proteins. Assuming this is a nucleosome bidon string model, where this blue is the histone core, where the gray is the DNA which is wrapping around the core. Now after acetylation, it would repulse the DNA and unpack it and make it a little bit loosen up, which would make it more accessible to the polymerase, several transcription factors and many other factors, right? As a result, the gene could be transcribed and it has been seen mostly histone acetylations are associated with active uh, genes or genes which are expressing. Now. How does this chromatin conformation switch is taking place with the help of any kind of histone modifiers like a hat or a HDAC? The question which is so important to raise at this point is whether these 
particular modifiers alone bring about these changes or is it more complicated? It turns out things are more complicated because along with these modifiers, there are several other players like the nucleosome remodeling complexes. Both work hand on hand to bring about this change in the chromatin landscape. About nuclear remodeling complex, we would learn about them in a different video. But for now, let's focus on histone modifiers. We have already learned about one type of histone modifiers, histone acetyl transferase and deacetylase, which regulate the acetylation profile on the histone N-terminal tail and regulates gene expression profile in a context-dependent manner. Now let's look at a different type of modification, which is methylation, which is br brought about by methyl transferase, which simply adds methyl group onto the N-terminal tail of the histone in same lysine or arginine residues. Now this methylation could be of several types. One type could be monomethylation, dimethylation or trimethylation. So the amount of time the methyl transfer is engaged with particular residue determines what type of methylation profile would be achieved, right? So the time of interaction of these modifiers also uh, is implicated in terms of the gene expression profile. Now, methylation is both associated or methylated histone is both associated with euchromatin and heterochromatin. It's all depend upon which residue is methylated because H3K9 trimethylation or H3K27 trimethylations are associated with heterochromatin state whereas H3K4 dimethylation or H3K4 trimethylations are associated with euchromatin state. So depending upon which residue is methylated and what type of methylation it is, dimethylation or trimethylation, the state of the chromatin is governed, right? Now other type of common uh, changes in the histone is phosphorylation which is added by phosphoryl transferase or phosphorylase enzymes. Now these enzymes would add phosphate group onto the serine or threonine residues on the histone tail. Now se both uh, phosphorylated serine or threonine have a negative charge and the DNA backbone is also having a negative charge. So there would be a repulsion between the DNA backbone and the histone and terminal tail, which would allow this histone to get like relaxed or like decompressed or in, more accessible to transcription factors. So that's why phosphorylation is mostly considered as a activatory, gene activatory or a, a kind of modifications. Though there are situations where phosphorylated histones are found with found in case of heterochromatins and in case of like metaphagic chromosomes and about that i'll be talking later in many cases phosphorylated histones help in dna damage repair but we'll get to that point soon other type of methyl uh, other type of modifications that can take place in the chromosome uh, or take place in the histone is adp ribosylation where adp ribosyl group is added to the N-terminals of the histone. ADP ribosylation is a common factor for the heat shock genes. Following a heat shock, the heat shock genes would be transcribed, right? And what happens following heat shock, ADP ribosylation takes place in the uh, nucleosomes in the region of the heat shock genes, which loosen up the nucleosome, allow these uh, heat shock genes to get transcribed and H HSP genes are important for fighting the heat shock response or initiating the heat shock response. So now we learned about most common type of uh, modifications in histones. Now the important part is we learned about the modifications or what kind of modification happens in which residue in which context. But the question is how inside the cell the cell would predict that they, this kind of modification is there. So the cell need to have a reading mechanism or a predicting mechanism, right? So now we would learn about the readers which would read this kind of modification and translate that knowledge into a conformational change or change in the chromatin landscape which would influence the gene expression profile in a time and space dependent manner. So first we talk about the bromodimin containing proteins which normally recognize a acetylated histone. whereas Chromodomain containing proteins recognize a methylated histone. Now, both bromodomain and chromodomain can be present in the same kind of reading reading protein. There could be a 
complex protein which might and with its bromo domain can recognize acetylation from one histone tail and methylation from other histone tail so that can read as a complex code right so there what are these chromo domain and bromo domain nature of these bromo domain and chromo domain containing protein what does they do it turns out histone modifiers could have bromo domain as well because once they see our acetylated residue in a cooperative fashion they acetylate nearby residues as well and it has been seen many histone acetyl transferase has this kind of bromo domain con containing uh, situations other than that it could be transcriptional factors or transcriptional regulators which might interact with these bromo domain containing uh, might interact with these uh, acetylated histone and then interact with the transcription regulators to bring about or modulate the rate of transcription or rate of expression of a gene eventually it these chromodomain or bromodomain containing proteins can interact with several histone um, maintenance protein such as cohesin or hp1 which might further allow the uh, further allow the regulation of compaction of a chromatin now how much the chromatin would be compacted it would govern the gene expression profile in that particular time in that particular space right so all the in short all of these kind of modifications in the histones are like a barcode depending upon the time and space this barcode is also different and all the mechanisms by which the cell can read these codes are like a barcode scanner each time or each barcode has a different meaning and this meaning comes with the context in different biological contexts different type of histone modifications would take place and that would be read differentially by these kind of reading machineries and that leads to diff altered chromatin profile i hope this uh, explanation was clear and in subsequent videos we would talk about all these kind of modifications in greater details and how that influence in gene expression profile but for now this was an introductory video to gain your attention I hope you like this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And in the comments, please let me know how you like my video or how my how do you like my explanation style. If you have any suggestions, please leave in the comments because it would really help me to improve my contents and it would also help others, right? So that's for now. Bye and see you in the next video. Thank you.